Good morning. Today is Tuesday, day six, I believe. It's uh, a little cooler than last night, but not cold enough to frost, so that's nice. We shouldn't have to dry out our bags forever. Just cold enough to make it hard to get up and going. Today's a big day. We're going over Texas Pass and Big Sandy Pass, and we get to see the Cirque of Towers. The camp at Shadow Lake had kind of been picked clean of any firewood. You could tell it was a well-established campground. A lot of people used it, but still there was no trash. People took good care of it, and it was a great, great campsite. Since we are planning on nine days of food, we've got some left over. So I'm having ramen for breakfast. Doesn't that sound good? Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six pills at once. Two Excedrin and four Ibuprofen. I've been dealing with some shin splints the last couple of days, so I'm trying to take precautionary measures for our trek this morning. I have claimed this beach over land. Wow, that is spectacular. Oh, I'm super excited, but Steve and I just got talking about how these false little corners we keep rounding, in anticipation of what the view is gonna be like for Texas Pass, getting all anxious and excited, and so yeah. Well, I think We've been getting one. worked up about that. I think we have another Oh no, that's it. Huh? There's Texas Pass. Piece of freaking cake. Okay, I want it on record. Steve just said, piece of cake. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting this pass out of the way. Uh, we've done other passes on this trip, and it's hard to tell what they're really like till you get out there. It looks like there might be some loose shaley stuff possibly, but it might not be as small and loose once we get up there, because Knapsack coal wasn't as bad at the top once we got there, so who knows? Want to get it over with. I'm excited for it. Um, it's kind of interesting though because Tess mentioned earlier as we were walking up here that it's like some infamous pass because everybody we talked to a couple of days ago was talking about this pass and so now we're here and, and able to finally get it done and over with, but I'm excited, looking forward to it. Yeah. It's gonna suck. I'll be honest, I've hiked loose shell stuff before. It's not pleasant. I wish it was bigger boulders. It's my only wish. I'm gonna be the slowest, but I'm not afraid. I wanna get it over with so we can see the Cirque and I'm gonna try and convince these crazies to finish the hike today so we can make it to the car tonight. We'll see how we feel. Twenty-six minutes, twelve seconds. We were anticipating a minimum an hour, so we killed it. Nailed it. We're right above Lonesome Lake, and behind us are some rock climbers climbing that thing. Two days ago, two guys died here rock climbing and one guy got seriously injured. We hope they were using ropes. Either way, that's too sad. And I hope no one else dies here, ever. We had done quite a bit of boulder hopping on this trip, and I I don't know that the stuff around Arrowhead Lake was much worse, but it was the mental aspect that yeah. we had the expectation that once we got up to the top of Jackass Pass, it was like 
smooth sailing till we got out. So I think mentally hitting oh, more boulder hopping, you know, I think it was more just the mental exhaustion. Um, we made it around there just fine, but it took us longer and that did start to wear on everybody. At about Arrowhead Lake, um, as we were continuing our descent down, it was very steep in sections and we weren't really anticipating that again. And also there was a lot of little traverses that kind of kept taking us back up the trail and then back down and then back up the trail and then back down through several miles. Um, that took forever. Up, up till we got to Big, Big Sandy. Once we got to Big Sandy, at least for me, I felt it was, it was a ray of sunshine. We just had a... <laughs> handful of more miles to go it but was it was beautiful. but but that section was very beautiful it was pretty much flat the entire way we are super beat but the thought of not having to sleep in a tent or eat dehydrated food again is keeping us going we've got five more miles before we are at the car and then we've got a long drive home but we're gonna push through and do it oh my god how are you <laughs> hi hi one of the few things that makes me still feel like a lady in the backcountry, as silly as it sounds, is having my toenails painted. And I've been really impressed with this Scotch Naturals. This color is called Canal Street Daisy. And it just survived a 90 mile backpacking trip. Oh, it hurts to stop. Um, mentally, we were all going cuckoo at this point because we were getting so excited to get to the car. So and the pizza. And, and the, the pizza. pizza. So we started playing movie trivia to pass the time. Harold? Fifth. Nope. Reverse? Nope. Because she was pregnant. That was actually <laughs> right. a really good way to pass the that time. That was. That last stretch past Big Sandy. It was a trail. <laughs> Oh my great friend. Bobby just ran? I just ran. What? I just felt For like, nothing? I just felt like running. You were so far away. I am in so much pain right now. I've been wearing my sandals since the Cirque, and while refreshing, they have zero cushioning, and I haven't learned how to walk in them right without hurting myself, so. Knees, ankles, on fire. How do you feel, Teresa? My legs are tired of walking. Feeling tender. I'm used to zero drop shoes, so my sandals ain't bugging me so much. But my legs are just tired of walking. Who's next, Cody? Cody, how do you feel? Uh, the upper half feels pretty good, although I'm hungry. We didn't eat lunch. Bottom half is pretty toast. Trevor? I am spent completely and utterly. How I am continuing on, only God knows. Does that make sense? <laughs> We're almost there. Hang on. I see a camp though. I do. I see That's a vehicle. A That's a car. You don't see a left. vehicle. That's a freaking it's a No, campsite. it's a, a tent. Campsite. It's a, it's a tent. And it's a we can't see the car, so we're not sure if the shuttle made it here yet. It better have, but we made it. 90 miles. Not worth it, Trevor. Oh, well, it's worth it. <laughs> not worth it, Trevor. <laughs> Don't do it. We have made it to Big Sandy Trailhead. 90 miles plus, probably, in the Wind River Range. And I see the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my entire freaking life. This right here. This car. It's beautiful. I'm so happy. I never realized how comfortable Honda Fit seats were. I am absolutely beat. We made it here safely with no injuries, no accidents, no problems. We were very blessed, mainly because we had such great weather. A, a bad weather would have really turned things around quickly and we may not have made it. So we're really grateful that we made that. And let's go eat, I'm starving. There's a moose, it's a big, a big one, moose. a little baby. Yeah,
I learned a couple of things. Um, variety in your food is very, very important. I didn't, I tried to keep things simple and so I planned oatmeal every breakfast. I planned a tortilla and almond butter every lunch with um, some trail mix and then my only variety was my dinners at night. So going back, I would alter the food up drastically and probably not take quite as much because uh, I end up having a whole bunch extra. From what I learned about this trip, um, I should have brought warmer clothes and less food because I probably still had two <laughs> days of food left once I finished. Um, other than that, it was a great trip. Oh, and I need an actual rope next time. I learned that I don't love extended backpacking trips. That I think it's my ADD that kicks in. It's beautiful. It's kind of mind-numbing to see all that beauty in one shot. But I still stand by my decision that when I go to a new area, I love to see it all at once and then make plans on where to go back later. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and truly savor and enjoy each of these spots now. And the purpose of this was A, to prove to myself I could do 90 miles, B, to do this super remote area where in the middle we were a 45 mile hike from civilization and that gave me a lot of confidence. But we're still suburbanites, I'm still soft core, and we totally <laughs> lucked out with the weather because if it had been a storm for a week, it could have been really bad up there. Yeah. Really bad. Okay. So I learned for me that probably a 100 mile backpacking trip is about the most that I'd want to do in one foul swoop. I'm just ready to sleep in a soft bed by that point with a real pillow and take a shower. Um, but I did love it. I think the mental aspect of getting up and doing the same thing every day, I think it does kind of wear on everybody. I feel like the introvert in me kind of did a little bit better at that than maybe Steve who's a little more on the extrovert side. I just kind of go into zone out meditate mode and just hike all day. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot of mileage to cover and it was just about right. It was really cool doing a trip that was that long. It felt like an epic journey. Now, Teresa is in such good shape. She probably could have gotten an extra five to 10 miles per day. So it was a lot different experience for her than for me. <laughs> I think I was the only one who didn't take ibuprofen on this trip. Yeah, I didn't take it. Oh, I took plenty. I did too. <laughs> It's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs>